Now, do you want to become a better bench presser? You're going to have to learn to apply these things in some way. You're going to have to learn to be able to bench press faster whilst maintaining good technique. How do you do that? In your warm-ups, in your back downs, in your accessories, you know? Start applying intent to lighter weights. Don't go and do your max and try and drop it off to your chest. That's not going to go very well for you. But if you implement it slowly with your warm-ups and you start by increasing the eccentric bar speed by 10%, that's something, that's a start. Okay, and that is a step forward to becoming a more efficient and effective bench presser. And welcome back to your mum's favorite channel on YouTube, Cult Strength. Now, today I'm gonna to be showing you how you can instantly add kilograms or pounds to your bench press, okay? Now, the other day I put up a video uh, doing this with deadlifts. I got a lot of good feedback. A lot of people obviously left comments telling me they tried what I said and instantly add kilograms to their deadlift. It's not clickbait, okay? I'm not here to try and change your technique today. I will make suggestions, but my goal for today is to, I guess, give you cues, perhaps some tweaks that you can implement now to your bench press as is and instantly get stronger. Now these cues are things that I find relatively basic and simple, but a lot of people struggle to execute them properly, okay? So we're gonna go over things like, you know, how should we grip the barbell? Uh, we're gonna go over bar path, bar speed, how to actually achieve leg drive, and I'll also share maybe a slightly more advanced technique um, to do with breathing and bracing, something that I learned because I was getting a series of pec injuries and pec tears, and I had to change something. And I realized that you know, the way I was breathing and bracing was letting me down, right? So I learned a new technique, which I'm gonna share with you, and that has honestly prevented me from having any pec tears, touch wood, in around five or six years. Okay, so I wanna share this knowledge with you. I genuinely think it will help, it will make you stronger, uh, and it will make you smarter in the gym. You know, and, and the goal is, if you wanna be really, really fucking strong, you gotta get stronger, but you gotta get smarter as well. You gotta to learn to implement these things. You know, they're gonna help you on your journey. These are all tools you can utilize. And that's what they are, okay? We'll also go over a little bit of equipment, um, obviously what you can use on a bench press and even how to use your wrist wraps correctly, how to use a belt correctly, because again, some people don't quite understand. They kind of just see people wearing it, so they think they should wear it, but there's no intent behind it. So that's what we're gonna to achieve today. I guarantee you, if you implement these, you will be stronger by the end of it. Let's go. All right, the first thing we're going to start with today, we'll start at the top. We're going to start with hand position, a bit of grip width, and I'll also show you how to wear a wrist wrap, okay? These things tie in. And I also think that how we grip the bar, you know, with, with most things, it's a chain. It's a chain of sequence, right? So the way we grip the bar affects the next part of the lift. So the grip will inherently play into how we use our lats correctly on the bench press, and that'll be the next thing we talk about. So we'll start with this. Have you heard of bulldog grip? Maybe, maybe not. It's a certain technique that we use on the bench press to maximally engage our lats um, by essentially, you've probably heard the cue of bend the bar or pull the bar apart, and it's a little bit vague, and it doesn't really tell you or show you what you need to do. So I'm gonna kind of break that down for you a little bit, okay? Now, first I'm gonna show you something. I don't know if you can see here on my hands, right? But I have calluses on the bottom of my palms, here and here. Now, not many people have calluses here on their hands, and the reason I have calluses on my palms there is because of how I hold the barbell, how I'm tensioning and squeezing the bar to create tension from my hands, which is the chain, goes all the way to my feet, right? Now, when we grab a barbell, we don't wanna just grab it aimlessly, okay? We don't wanna hold it in our wrists so that a hand is straight. We hear this a lot of the time, and I was guilty of this many years ago, thinking that when you bench press, you have to have straight wrists. That's false, it's counterproductive. If you have a heavy weight in your hands, and the bar's sitting here, you see it all the time in fucking videos that go wrong, right? Falls out of your hand, people drop the bar on themselves. Same with suicide grip. Wrap your thumb around the fucking bar. If you're gonna compete in powerlifting, you have to in competition anyway, so you may as well. But how we do wanna grab the barbell here, it's kind of like with a twist. 
Okay, so I'll show you standing up and I'll show you laying down. Let's think of this, right? You can probably do this while you're seated there watching this video. Put your hands out in front of you, okay? Just like this, palms up. Now when you think about holding a barbell, all right, however you will, and at the same time, I want you to imagine squeezing it hard, pulling your wrist back, and then externally rotating from the shoulder and elbow. At the same time, squeeze you know, your lats or your scaps back. So, like this, right? So I'm turning out, essentially if there was a barbell in my hands, I would be bending it that way. So cranking it out, okay? I'm pushing into the bar, cranking out, squeezing my lats in here. So again, similar to a deadlift, I'm thinking about if I had a mandarin in my armpits, when I go to do this, I would be squeezing it, right? I'm flexing my pecs a little bit, but more so in my lats, squeezing out. Okay, I'm gonna show you what it looks like on the barbell. So we'll set up. We've got 140 on the bar, just for demonstration's sake. So we set up, we think about it, we come back, we wanna get a good visual on what we're doing. So I like to set up behind the bar. Again, that's a technical thing, you can do that if you'd like. In terms of where do I hold the bar, how wide? Ideally, in an ideal world, index finger on the ring. Not everything's ideal for me. What's more comfortable for my shoulders is ring finger on the ring, okay? So that's where I'm gonna be. So this is how I set it up. I open my hands, I wrap my hands around the bar, I'm gonna swing under, all right? So we're under the bar here. Now from this position, I'm shoving my shoulder blades back and down, but what I'm doing with my hands is I'm doing this, right? It might not look as obvious, but right now, before I unrack it, I'm gonna crank it and squeeze my lats. So in this position here, you can see that my wrists are cranked back a little bit and I'm tensioning outwards, squeezing my lats, creating stability. Okay. Now I'm not sitting the barbell here across the top of my hand. So all the pressure is coming back here, right? The bar is still traveling down my forearm to my elbow. But my hands are like this. So I'm not like this. My hands are back, but the barbell is stacked along the top of the wrist. Okay, you want to think about that. When you're pressing a bar, if you're filming it on the side, the barbell is stacked down the shoulder and the wrist, right? Elbow, shoulder, wrist. Um, so that's how you want to kind of grip the barbell. So we're not being passive. We're not just holding it in our hands. There is intention behind what we're doing. It's all external rotation. Grab the bar, squeeze, crank down. Now, to support that, because again, if you're holding heavy weights, there's gonna be stress on the wrist joint. How do you wear a wrist wrap to prevent pain? A lot of people just wrap their wrists like this, right? <clears throat> Are you guilty of this? Maybe. Let me show you how you do it. <clears throat> what you wanna do is make sure you're covering half of the hand so the wrist joint doesn't move. So I start just above the wrist joint. We go one above the top. We travel a little bit down. So now we're slightly covering the top of the hand. And again, we lock it down there. Okay, now we don't want too much on the palm, but you want to have it high enough so I can move my wrist like this to this one. It ain't going nowhere, right? So we're in that position and we're cranking back. We now have the support to give us the confidence to lift heavy weights. So that's the grip. All right, guys, now before we move on to actually getting a few demonstration reps in uh, and before talking about bar speed and bar path and things like that, what I will quickly touch on, because this again is a really important part of the chain and it comes into the bracing aspect, is that what are we doing with our upper back on a bench press? Okay, now the answer is most definitely fucking not laying just on the bench. If you're just laying on the bench like a flop, well, you're not doing it properly, right? Now, bench pressing, well, isn't meant to be comfortable, 
okay, we're supposed to get ourselves into a position that is uncomfortable to create tightness, one, to move more weight, two, to protect ourselves from injury. Now, one of the reasons that you know, pec injuries are so prevalent on a bench press is the fact that we're essentially laying on a hard board, right, that as we're pressing, it's working against us by trying to separate or protract our shoulder blades. Now, when our shoulder blades or our scaps start to protract, meaning come out, we start getting a lot of movement through the shoulder joint. The more movement we have through the shoulder joint, the higher the risk of pec injury, okay? So the reason that we want to use our lats, or people say, you know, use your lats or squeeze your scaps down on a bench press, is because it limits the movement in your shoulder joint, okay? So limiting movement of the shoulder joint is what's gonna stop you tearing your pec and essentially being able to overload your body with more weight. We're not really built to do this movement, okay? But we find a way to do it. And you've got to find a way to do it injury free. So what you need to think about with your upper back is you need to have intent. What the fuck am I actually doing with it? We'll keep it really simple. We want scapular retraction and depression. I'm not saying I want you to be fucking sad. What I'm saying is I want you to pull your shoulder blades together as hard as possible, right? Think about this. We're flat here, right? Pull them together. So retraction, depression means shoving them down, right? What happens when we do that? You get what we might call an arch. Now I'm not saying you have to think about bench pressing with an arch. There is some ridiculous examples of it, but in its principles, it's a really good thing. Because what we're trying to do is retract and press our shoulder blades, right? That immediately pulls our chest up, our rib cage up, we start to flare it. It's reducing your range of motion, okay? And keeping us safer. Now you see people take the piss with that and they, get the old harbour bridge, and there's literally no range of motion. Now, is it legal in a competition? Yes. Is it a bit fucking sus? Yes. But that's nor here, nor there. My job is to get you strong whilst being injury free. And that's how you're gonna do it. Okay, so when we're thinking about even the last cues that I gave you with the bulldog grip, right? The external rotation. So think about it as a more, more uh, complete chain of movement. So you've got tension, barbell hands, externally rotate, right? Squeeze lats. What am I doing here? Now I follow this. I squeeze back with my scaps even harder and I pull them down, right? You're creating that extension through your upper back. And we're not thinking about arching through our lower back. A lot of people do, that's how you get that exaggerated movement. What I simply want you to focus on is your upper back, okay? I'm not trying to change your technique, this is simply a cue you can use that will make you bigger and stronger. I am gonna give you just a little visual demonstration of those things together, just so you can get a grasp of it in your mind. Now, what your bench should look like, ideally, if you're filming it from the side, is you don't wanna look like you're laying flat on the bench, okay? I said you don't have to have a big arch, but you don't wanna be flat on the bench. You want to look like you have achieved some form of scapular retraction and depression. So we might try and get a little bit of a side angle for this one, just so you can see it. We're gonna go through the, the whole process we've done so far, okay? All right. Back under. All right, now we're setting our hands. My ring finger goes on the ring. I pick myself up, I slide under the bench. Now this is where I'm gonna use the opportunity to get my shoulder blades and scaps down, okay? So watch closely, myself up. All right, now I'm gonna shove my shoulder blades into the bench like I'm shoving them down towards my back pocket. All right, so my head touches the bench first, I'm shoving down, I'm using the barbell here to push myself down. All right, creating an uncomfortable tight position. I dig my shoulder blades in. So right now I'm squeezing them together and back and down. All right, now I'm gonna have to slightly flare my elbows to get the barbell off the rack because I'm unwrapping for myself. But then watch as I pull myself into position, all right? Starts with the wrist, bulldog grip, tension, squeeze. Now, shoulder blades, scaps are back and down. Tension on the bar. Easy peasy. We'll be back in a sec for your next tip.
All right, now we're gonna talk something a little more, we'll call it a little more advanced, but I really don't believe so. I teach this uh, to people that are, that are new to the gym as well, because I believe that it's perhaps something that is more difficult to learn, but in the long run will serve you better. So you may as well learn it. Right now, this is what I truly believe has prevented me from further injuring my pec in the last five or six years, because I learned how to breathe and brace effectively. I'm gonna give you two demonstrations. This is probably a good visual demonstration as well. The first demonstration I give you will be a regular, what you might regularly see with bench press, breathing and bracing, which is, I'll show you quickly now, okay? Let's just imagine we're bench pressing. All right, hands here. Now it's gonna be off the rack. All right, we're set. They breathe out, they breathe in, they brace. Air goes out, breathe in. Right, now what's happening here is they get into a position, they unrack it, they reset, they lose their tightness. They then take another breath, lose tightness again. Now what becomes challenging is, as you get stronger, as there is more weight stacked on top of you, it becomes near impossible to actually achieve the perfect braced position you know, with that loaded above you, right? You now have force coming down on you and you're trying to pull your chest back up and your shoulder blades back into the bench. And there's force coming down on you preventing that. So the idea is why do we need to lose that brace in the first place, right? Fuck me, it's not rocket science, hey, but it's really fucking simple. What we're gonna try and achieve here, what we will achieve here is taking our breath and brace before we unwrap the barbell, before, okay? We're gonna hold that brace for the entire duration of the set. Now, this is something, as I said, more advanced. It will take a bit of practice. You won't be able to do a set of 10 immediately. You might start with two or three reps, a quick breath and brace and go again. Eventually though, you will get better at it, you'll get more confident, and you'll understand that it's actually quite hard to pass out laying down. So I'm gonna show you a demonstration. I might actually get an unrack this time because I wanna be able to keep myself in the right position for these demonstrations and unracking yourself, you actually do have to flare your elbows to get it off the rack, which isn't ideal. Which is why I always say, if you have a training partner, utilize it. Hey Sarah, can you give me two quick handoffs? Please, thank you. And no one laugh at Sarah's outfit. She's wearing her, She's wearing her onesie for competition this weekend. She's competing. So no one laugh. You're both matching. You shut your mouth. You shut your mouth. It's not Christmas. All right, so I'm just gonna do three reps uh, with a demonstration of how not to do it first, and then three with a demonstration of how to do it. I'm scared. You're just gonna stand back. You're all good. All right, so first, first one is regular how I would not do it. Second demonstration will be how I think you should do it and we'll talk about it afterwards. The whole setup though, think about what I've been doing the whole time with the wrists, the lats, the scaps, all right? And now the breathing and bracing. Again. Again? Yep, right. I'm gonna do a better demonstration. Three reps again? Three reps again. So, as you can see there, it looks very different. Let's talk about the first one. With a lot of time being wasted, a lot of time under tension, just holding it there, trying to get back into position. All right, now as you get stronger, you need to be efficient. If you're handling 200 kilos plus, 
you don't want to have the bar in your hands for longer than you need. It's not efficient and you're going to be missing out on work you can get done. That's what I believe. With the way I like to do it, you can see that I get my brace before I unrack it. I don't have to think about trying to get back into position. I'm in position. The hardest part's already done. If you can get your setup perfect, get into a perfect position, you're gonna have a very high rate of success when you bench press. You're eliminating you know, a factor that is increasing the risk of missing a lift and hurting yourself. So there's only positive that can come from making that change. As I said, it does take time to learn it. It's not easy, it's more advanced. You're gonna feel like, almost when you first start doing it, you're gonna feel an increased pressure. You may finish a set being puffed out. You've held your breath, you've stayed tight, so you're gonna get that sensation afterwards, but you do get used to it. And eventually you start realizing, fuck, I can now do maybe five or six reps with something I can only do three or four reps with before because I've become more efficient, I'm staying in position for the entire set, so I'm really not fucking myself over. And it's as simple as that. I also added the belt. Now let's just quickly talk about a belt. All right, so lever belt. You don't want it too tight when you bench press, okay? And it's not necessarily helping you in the same way that it will with a squat and with a deadlift, okay? Because we're not really fighting this kind of gravity, right? What it's allowing you to do is actively brace your entire midsection out into something, okay? Now that does create extra stability. A, bench, uh, a belt on the bench press won't make you weaker, so if it could help, it might be worth exploring. All right, baby, now we're gonna touch on leg drive. After that, we're gonna go over bar path, you know, bar speed, etc. because I think that will tie it off as a whole. So right now, leg drive. Now, I'm sure at some point you've wondered, what do they fucking mean by leg drive on a bench press? Because you might think you're doing it and someone will say, you're not using your legs properly. Chances are, they also have no fucking idea what leg drive is either. So I'm here to break it down for you. Relax. <clears throat> How's the best way to explain this? Probably a visual demonstration, but I'll also talk about it. We'll get you on this side a little bit then. So, I'm gonna start by, by sitting and trying to explain it to you, right? So imagine I'm lying down, right? You've got your feet on the bench, on the ground while you're on the bench. What you wanna think about with leg drive is basically you are pushing yourself backwards, all right, off the bench. You're trying to drive yourself back off the bench as hard as you can. Now, you're probably asking yourself, what the fuck do you mean? Why do I wanna go off the back of the fucking bench? Well, you're not going to. Why is that? If you had been listening to the last couple of tips I gave you, I spoke about scapula retraction and depression and how it's important to dig your shoulder blades into the bench. Now, what that's gonna do is stop you from sliding back. You're essentially creating this circle of force, right? Your legs driving you back, but your scaps are driving you back down the bench. That's how you're getting that tension. That's how we're creating what people will call an arch, right? It's a balance of power going both ways. Now, what people tend to do on the bench press is when they're bench pressing, I'll lay down for this, is they tend to come up onto their toes like this, right? Now you can't really push like that, all right, for one. And what you're gonna notice is a lot of the time when people's heels come up like this, their bum comes off the bench. Illegal, you can't even do that in a competition. You get red lights. All right, so what you wanna think about is driving your heels towards the ground. All right, so driving your heels down towards the ground, driving back, and you should feel a lot of tension through your quad, just above your knee. Now, the day after a successful bench press session, believe it or not, I have a little bit of pain here. The pain isn't fantastic, but at least it's telling me that fuck, I must be driving my legs really hard, okay? So if you're not getting any response to that at all, you're probably not using leg drive. Now, it's also important 
to keep in mind, you need to have a certain amount of surface area touching the floor. So if you're up on your tippy toes, you've got a little bit of surface area, right? Now you can bench flat-footed as well. Now I don't mind if you bench flat-footed. Again, that's a technical choice from you. But the principle remains the same as that we're trying to drive back. Now I find it much easier to achieve that leg drive and a higher amount of force with my leg drive when I lift my heels off the ground. Now, in most federations, you can do that. I believe there's only one or two federations where you have to have a flat foot, uh, and that's IPF. Okay, but most federations will allow heels off the ground. So if you can do that, I dare say you should give it a go and really think about using that leg drive. I'm gonna give you a visual demonstration now, but there's one thing to keep in mind is that the leg drive, you wanna think about maintaining that leg drive from the moment the barbell comes off the rack, before it comes off the rack, because it comes back into the whole chain, right? The sequence, the whole sequence is that we're getting tension from the hands down through the, the scaps and the pec, then we're retracting our scaps and our shoulder blades down, right? And now we're bracing into our belt, and now we're using our feet to drive and use our, our quads a bit more. So it's this whole chain, right? Now if you don't have that tension the entire way across from the start, you're gonna find it very hard to utilize the entire thing okay you're going to find you'll have no leg drive you might just have your shoulder blades into the bench um, or vice versa okay so with in, well, with saying that what i tend to do on my bench press is i don't keep a 100 percent tension the entire time but i don't go any lower than say 70 percent and you're going to see what i mean by that when i bench there is a little moment where there isn't as much tension because when i go to press there is a little bit of a kick all right a bit of a forceful kick down and back. Now, the reason I would say that's okay is because I haven't fully let, lost tension. It's not like I've gone fully relaxed and then I kick. I'm still maintaining most of my tension, but you know, for me, when I bench and use the heave on my paws, that's an excellent way for me to use a bit of momentum. So there's a few layers to leg drive, but the base principle is the same as that you wanna use and utilize as close to 100% of force the entire time. I'm gonna show you what I mean now real quick. Hey Sarah, can I get one more unwrap please? So pay attention to this. I'm gonna do it my way. All right, I'm not gonna show you how not to do this one because it really sucks to see people not using leg drive. So just think about if yours doesn't look like this and it looks like, you know, you're on your tippy toes and your heels aren't driving towards the floor, think about doing it this way. Now I have the entire surface of my toes and I'd say 50% of the balls of my feet are in contact with the ground. You'll better see because I wear a very thin shoe. So you better see what my foot is doing. Another three reps. The whole process, remember? It's very important if you want to build a big bench press that you build a routine. My bench press setup is always the same. Back behind the bar, fingers where they need to be. Slide under. find my feet position, digging my shoulder blades down hard as I can, bulldog grip, big breath. Right, thank you. So you see, I was driving down the whole time like this, there was none of this happening with my feet. So I hope that makes some form of sense for you. You know, it's a little hard you know, to always, I guess, explain these things. So I like to use visual demonstrations and cues as well. But uh, we've got one more thing to cover. We'll chat in a minute. All right, so we're on to our final little segment. Now, obviously, we've gone over the grip. We've gone over width of the hands. We've gone over, you know, wrist wraps, belt, how to use our scaps, our lats, upper back, and how to use leg drive. Now this is gonna tie it all off. We're gonna talk about how fast should you be moving the bar down on the eccentric and a little bit about the bar path because again, I see a lot of people starting, mostly starting from the wrong position when they've unracked it, right? They've, they've, their start point is a little bit off and it makes specifically their first rep really, really bad. And unfortunately with powerlifting, that's kind of that first rep that counts the most. So a lot of you can probably relate to the fact that when you bench press, 
The first rep feels more painful or slower or uglier than the second, third, and fourth rep of the set. It seems to take forever to get the bar down, and then all of a sudden, you can move, right? I see it all the time. So we're gonna go over why that might happen and how you can fix it. Now, bar speed on the way down, we need to simply think about this in the most basic way, right? The slower you bring the barbell down, the more time under tension, the more fatigue you're creating before you press the bar. There are pros to this technique, and it's uh, very suitable to some people, perhaps someone who's new to it, who is working on technique, uh, someone who's learning the technique, right? But at some point, I truly believe, if you want to move the most amount of weight possible, you have to consider moving the bar faster, right? Now, I'm not saying you have to move the bar as fast as me, but if we had to, so let's say, create an ideal perfect bench press, it would be moving the barbell down, literally like this, whilst maintaining perfect technique, positioning, and tightness. That is the most efficient way you could possibly bench press. I don't think you can argue against that, right? You now have maximal energy left for the press. Now, achieving that is something else. That's very difficult, which is why people tend to bench press a bit slower, because it's easier to maintain position, technique, tightness. So it's a fine line. So to answer the question of how fast should you bench press, well, it would depend on your technique and experience level, and also your intent. Now, do you want to become a better bench presser? You're going to have to learn to apply these things in some way. You're going to have to learn to be able to bench press faster whilst maintaining good technique. How do you do that? In your fucking warm-ups, in your back downs, in your accessories, you know? Start applying intent to lighter weights. Don't go and do your max and try and fucking drop it off to your chest. That's not going to go very well for you. But if you implement it slowly with your warm-ups and you start by increasing the eccentric bar speed by 10%, that's something, that's a start. Okay, and that is a step forward to becoming a more efficient and effective bench presser. Very easy, right? So you just have to consider that, is that most people probably could do better with it, right? Now, me, my constant goal with bench press is to keep becoming tighter, getting into a better position as the weights get heavier whilst maintaining that same bar speed, you know? When I am handling weights that maybe are a little too heavy for me, I compensate by slowing the bar speed down a little bit, right? To try and accentuate the technique and positioning, which again, doesn't necessarily work that well because you shouldn't bench differently based off the weight. You should bench the same. So again, we can always learn, we can always get better. Me too. I'm always learning and always trying to do that. Now, bar speed, bar path, sorry, not bar speed, bar path, starting position. Might get you over here, Em, please. This is a visual demonstration. Now, I'm gonna show you an example of something you may be familiar with, where we're starting with the barbell too high, we're not bringing it down far enough to the start point. I'm not gonna get into an exaggerated position for this, we just got 60 kilos. I just want you to see what I'm talking about. All right, so, still gonna pull my scaps down a bit. All right, so, let's think about this. So let's say you're benching, you're about to unrack it, right? All right, now we're gonna start from here, but pay attention to where the second, third reps start from. So bring it down, it's gonna be a bit slow, you're gonna find the groove. Right? So I started the first rep here, but the second and third rep, they were here, right? So that's the groove. Here, you're out of the groove, you're starting out of the groove, you're not in an ideal starting position. What you wanna think about is, film your bench press from the side so you can see the bar path and see if that's happening. And if it is, simply do this. Bring it down further, right? I'm gonna start here. Now, I started with the barbell in the right position each rep. One exercise you can very quickly do though, to figure out your exact starting position or ideal starting position is this. Get an empty fucking bar. I mean fucking empty, all right? Very simple. You lay down, further down though, further this way down the bench, because you're gonna have to do something. Unrack it, just lay kind of flat with your scaps retracted. All right, now from here, 
pull the bar down your body, all right, and then bring it back up over your face, slowly. Now, as you go back down, find the point where the bar feels weightless or very light. For me, it's here. So this is my groove. So from here, it's straight down. Boom, straight up, right? I'm not going from here on an angle like this back up. Now, before the elitists jump on and say, the bar path shouldn't be straight up and down. It should be on an angle. Yes. Yes, I get it, but also it is so exaggerated by some people that it becomes fucking stupid. If you think about having a almost straight bar path, you will achieve that. Understand in your mind that it will look slightly angled, slightly. That's perfect, all right? It's not literally straight up and down. There's a slight arc. We don't want an exaggerated arc. That's not efficient because that means there's movement in the fucking shoulder joint, doesn't it? And what did I say about that before? It's gonna get you hurt, all right? So that's that. I hope this makes sense. You know, there's obviously a lot of information. So I hope you maybe got a notebook, wrote some stuff down. You can always watch it again. If you have any questions, better yet, drop a comment. If you found this useful, please drop a comment. Subscribe to my page, like this video, and just quickly before I go, I'm gonna start making an effort to put out maybe a video every day, at least five or six a week on YouTube, right? So I'm thinking about adding some videos in like, hey, how to utilize or how to use a dumbbell correctly, correctly for strength and for hypertrophy. You know, a full video going through different dumbbell movements and how you should be executing them. How to do them to obviously get the most out of it because accessories suck. If you're gonna do them, you may as well do them properly. So if you'd like to see some more content like that, you know, tutorial like how to use a cable machine properly, what are the best leg accessories, quad builders, you fucking name it. You wanna see a strongman session? You let me know. I wanna make content, but I wanna know what you wanna see. I do hope this helped. Do all that shit I said, and until next time, go to the fucking gym and practice this shit.